Joining us now, ABC News Chief Washington Correspondent Jonathan Carl. His book, Betrayal, The Final Act of the Trump Show, is out today in paperback. John, great to see you on this side of the fence. We always like when you have a book out because we get to talk to you on our show. Um, let's talk about the event you're covering Definitely. tonight at Mar-a-Lago. Donald Trump expected to announce another run, but boy, in a very, very different position than he would have been even a week ago making this announcement. I mean, Joe went through it, the incredible series of losses that the Republican Party uh, has taken based on Donald Trump's actions and, and the, the midterm elections, not to mention uh, the flurry of criminal investigations, civil lawsuits, uh, his own loyal vice president coming out and calling him reckless, saying that he put his family in danger and all the people in the Capitol. I mean, it's really quite a time. Um, uh, but uh, all systems go, according to people who are working for Trump, and it's a much smaller group, this political operation, very small. They say it's all systems go. But here's what I'll tell you, Willie. I I learned yesterday that two of Trump's most high profile uh, allies were trying to convince him as recently as Sunday afternoon uh, to, to call this thing off and to mm. wait until at least after the Georgia runoff. Uh, but he's not listening to any of that. No surprise there. And just to underline your point, in those swing states, in those major races, J.D. Vance won. He backed J.D. Vance in Ohio. But in those other swing states, Joe Lombardo won in Nevada to be governor. Ron Johnson won in Wisconsin to be senator. And that's it, pending the race in Georgia. So massive failures across the board for Donald Trump candidates. So what is your sense inside that tight circle of Donald Trump? And it is smaller than ever, it seems about his prospects now. What do they hear in all the noise around Ron DeSantis, who won a crushing victory in the state of Florida? And people now, some Republicans, not exactly profiles and courage at this point, but sticking their heads out and saying, it's time to move on from Donald Trump. Yeah, I mean, they're they're aware of all that. Obviously, uh, some of them will, will, will candidly uh, acknowledge uh, that this is that this is a, a, a truly heavy lift to say the least. But, but you know, the truth is that Donald Trump may not still have the juice uh, to win again, even even a Republican nomination. That remains to be seen. But what he does still have the ability to do is to destroy. Uh, the party or his opponents if he fails to win. Uh, one, one thing I describe in, in betrayal was a, a, an incredible scene on January 20th. Shortly after he leaves the White House at 8 in the morning, uh, he goes to Andrews Air Force Base. He has a little farewell, and he gets goes on to Air Force One for his last flight on the plane, and he receives a call from Ronna McDaniel, the, the, the chair of the Republican Party, who's just calling to, to wish him well. And he tells her that he is leaving the Republican Party. Uh, he's going to create his own party, and he's done with it. He's like, you know, you guys didn't help me. Uh, you don't deserve to win. Um, I'm, I'm going my own way. And, and Ronna McDaniel, uh, you know, kind of really worries this will destroy the party. You know, if he takes his voters, the Republicans will be a permanent minority party. Uh, and over the course of the next several days, they make a series of threats and negotiations, and he agrees to stay. Uh, but that threat is there still. Um, and, you know, he, he may or may not be able to win another Republican nomination, but he's not going to stand by and watch somebody else win no. and somebody else, you know, take what he believes he built. Yeah, Jonathan, so fascinating that you brought that up because I was going to ask you about a possible independent run if things don't go well in the Republican Party. Because isn't Trump setting himself up right now into a trap? You read stories in the New York Post this morning, for instance. Selena Zito, who wrote the book on Trump's rise in Pennsylvania, goes back to Pennsylvania yesterday talking to all of these former Trump people. And what was the sin that turned them off? attacking Ron DeSantis. And so now he's setting himself up. Yeah. We show these polls. We know Donald, uh, he can't avoid going after the person who's beating him by 20 points in the poll. The more he attacks Ron DeSantis, the more he hurts himself in the Republican Party. And it seems to me, if he's going to do that, his only alternative is running as an independent. Yeah, and look, he's, he is singularly focused on DeSantis right now. I mean, he believes that he created DeSantis, and in large part, he's actually right. You know, DeSantis wouldn't be governor if it weren't for Donald Trump. Uh, but he, uh, Trump didn't endorse him in his reelection bid, and DeSantis goes on to win uh, that decisive victory. And I went out right a few days before the election to a rally that Trump had in Sioux City, 
and found in, in, in talking to the crowd there, uh, these are these are the red hat wearing. The, 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 this is the true believers. Most of them, you know, going to their fifth, sixth, seventh Trump rally. Uh, th these people really liked Ron DeSantis too. Um, you know, Trump may be singularly focused on taking DeSantis down because he believes DeSantis is not sufficiently uh, loyal or grateful for all that Donald Trump has done for him. Uh, but, though, you know, Trump supporters like DeSantis. You can imagine. I mean, imagine there's a debate. Imagine this actually gets to the point where you have a Republican debate um, and DeSantis is on a stage uh, with with Donald Trump. I mean, one one issue that is driving so many of these supporters is the is is anti-vax is is hatred of anthony fauci is kind of trutherism on on covid well you know donald trump's the guy who who you know created the you know it likes to take credit for creating the vaccine they for a while called it the trump vaccine he's the guy who had Anthony Fauci as one of his top advisors on his COVID task force. And you can imagine Ron DeSantis saying, wait a minute, you know, who on this stage hired Anthony Fauci or had Anthony Fauci on the payroll? And, you know, Donald Trump, why couldn't you say those two words? Why couldn't you say you're fired? I would have. So, look, I, 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 I think it's I think it's dangerous, uh, not, not just for DeSantis, this 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 uh, confrontation. I think it's dangerous for Trump. Hey, John, as you know, a lot of uh, obituaries that we read in newspapers are written well ahead of time, especially for prominent people. They're evergreen obits, and they, they run <laughs> yeah. when the person dies. I've written a few, yeah, yeah. Now, do you get the sense that tonight, whatever happens tonight, will be just anecdotal evidence for another paragraph in Donald Trump's political obituary? I mean, you know, the, the subtitle of betrayal was the final act of the Trump show. So I, I, I think we're still kind of watching that final act uh, uh, play out. And, and, and I do believe that uh, it, it, it doesn't seem like this is the beginning of, uh, of, of, of a great comeback uh, that, that would require a rewriting of the, uh, of the first paragraph of the obit. So I, I, think, I think you're on to something. Absolutely. Whom I'm just checking my notes. It but, appears you have run against... Uh, yeah. You have run against Donald Trump in 2016, working alongside Hillary Clinton, of course. What is your sense of the challenge or perhaps a welcome challenge for Democrats now if Donald Trump, he will announce tonight, he's still, if you look at polling, he leads all the national polling anyway uh, in a head to head with Ron DeSantis. How do Democrats handle him this time? But now they've got all this record of the last six years, effectively, of his dragging Republicans down in so many of these elections. Well, you know, it's one of the things I'm actually curious to ask uh, what Jonathan thinks, given that he's covered, uh, you know, four, uh, uh, you know, United U U.S. presidents in the last four decades, this notion of um, whether it's easier to cover the Biden administration or harder because with Trump, he was so uh, available to speak all the time. And I would hope that the Democrats continue doing the work that they're doing, that the administration, you know, the president's in uh, Asia right now and this idea of continuing to do the work. And I think what we saw last week is that's what Americans recognized is that the administration is doing the work. Democrats are doing the work uh, up and down the ticket and, uh, and they rewarded that. And so it's just continuing to talk about the work is what I think uh, Democrats need to do and let DeSantis and uh, Trump uh, duke it out amongst themselves, which I am sure they will do. John, what's your sense of that? How are Democrats feeling about Donald Trump still, still being right in the center of the conversation of our politics? Well, one of the one of the most controversial things that the Democrats did during these midterms uh, was supporting the Trump clones, mm -hmm. the Trump acolytes, uh, mm -hmm. the election deniers, people um, uh, like uh, like Boldick in New Hampshire or uh, or John Gibbs, who, who, who defeated uh, Peter Meyer, who had voted to, to impeach Trump. Uh, th there was a lot of criticism of that strategy. And from a just a just a pure political opportunism uh, measure, it was successful. I mean, those candidates, those Trump candidates, universally, the ones that were supported by Democrats, universally lost. Um, so I, 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 I do think that it's, it's frustrating uh, for Democrats to see Trump still, to the extent that he has, dominating the discussion. But I think it's also a big thing that drove uh, their, their successes uh, in the midterms. And not just the, the candidates that they, that they supported in Republican primaries. 
Uh, but, you know, the, 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 the fact that Donald Trump hung over this midterm was clearly uh, what, what dragged Republicans and what should have been, should have been, under any other objective uh, historical measure, should have been a big, big election uh, for Republicans, uh, wasn't. And it wasn't because, in, in large part, of Donald Trump. Whether they like it or not, he's right back in it tonight around 9 o'clock Eastern time. Yeah. Jonathan Carl, so great to see you. John's book, Betrayal, the final act great. of The Trump Show, is out today in paperback. Come back soon, John. Good to see you.